All right. Happy Friday, everybody. We have made it to the weekend. Actually, I think the weekend kind of started a couple of days ago when the NCAA tournament started and we stayed up all night long watching tech basketball like that. And we wake up today on Friday. We're like, my gosh, I'm too old for this. But we're not. So let's have some fun on our Friday. We're going to grade tech basketball for the season. You give us your grade. I'll give you mine. We're going to talk tech baseball, changing the lineup tonight. I like it. It's going to stretch out, I think. And that's what I love about Tim Tadlock, not afraid to make changes. He's not one of those guys who makes up his mind in January and February, and this is the way it's going to be. He keeps tinkering until he gets it right. Uh, and then uh, every Friday we ask you the most Texan thing you have done this week. Uh, it is imperative upon you to be very Texan and to do Texan things. All right, let's get it going. Uh, you guys know what to do. The early arrivals, uh, if the audio is good, video is good, give us thumbs up. Just, you know, hit us in the comment section, say, hey, we're ready to rock and roll. And then you share it with your friends. Oh, yeah. Whether you're on Facebook Live or Twitter, X, or on uh, the YouTube channel, you can invite people in and say, hey, we're talking West Texas. We're talking tech. We're engaging in a conversation that you're going to love on a Friday night. In three, in two. Good evening, West Texans. All you good, fine, friendly folks out there who wish you were. I'm Ryan Hyatt. TheRaiderLand.com, where you start your day every day, including our wonderful hot links section that gives you cool stuff that we found that we think you're going to like. That's where you start your day. We give you your questions of the day as well uh, when you go to TheRaiderLand.com. And everything we do, we archive there. So if you miss something, that's where you go. We're in the Arctic Air Studios tonight, veteran-owned and operated. Shane Timblin's going to take care of you this spring and summer. Uh, if you are afeard that you're... Uh, your air conditioner ain't going to make it. Give them a call now. Get them out before it gets ugly. It might not be as bad as you think. Call the bear. Arctic air. Also by Domino's Pizza. Baseball, basketball, pizza, pizza, baseball, basketball. Uh, get the app. Tremendous savings right there on the app. If you're still in town tonight, you can pick it up on the way home. And by the Reserve, a culinary tavern, 103rd and Quaker. If you loved Old Nick's Sports Cooler and Lounge, uh, just down the street, I mean, there are a couple of years now. The menu is even better. The atmosphere is 10 times better. And you can watch all the games there. So if you can't make it out tonight to Dan Law Field and watch baseball and you're on your way home, hey, run into uh, the reserve. Get you a good meal. Great brunch Saturday and Sunday. Of course, we're brought to you by United Supermarkets. All the communications that occur on this little transom United Supermarkets in Market Street. And if you want to look as good as I do, and I know you do, and you love the shirts we wear, hi there, check this out. I'm looking good. Spring. Boot City, one money saving mile outside the West. Spring. Well, yeah, spring. Spring clothes are in fashion. They've got them. Short sleeve shirts, everything you need. All right, here we go. Uh, Red Dawn Double T with a cactus. That's a lot of crap going on there on Twitter. Says, we need to win this series. Uh, yeah, Tech needs to win this series. We're going to talk about that. That's what Tech needs right now, baseball-wise, is to win the series. We're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to talk about Tech baseball, live in progress. Uh, are they underway yet? Have we thrown first pitch? Looking at the game status uh, to uh, see if we are. I think we're still... Probably a couple of minutes away. They're letting John Harris and Mike Gustafson on the uh, ESPN Plus broadcast set it up and everything, and then they get going. Uh, most Texan thing you've done this week, what was that? And then we ask you tonight, the grade you would give Texas Tech base, uh, basketball this year, full season, finishing last night, obviously, against NC State, late into the night. What would you give them? Coach comes in a little bit late after the run that North Texas had in the NIT, putting together a roster on the fly in the Big 12, the toughest conference in America, as we now know, because we hear everybody say it. Finishes top four, fighting massive injury problems through most of the year and overcoming it with, at different times, smoke and or mirrors, and sometimes smoke and mirrors. What grade would you give them? Uh, some guy on Twitter today was like, yeah, we yeah, lost the first round team we should have beat. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you, you might be better than North Carolina State. I don't know. Maybe North Carolina State, after watching them the last week, massively underachieved and were poorly coached during the regular season. I don't know. 
So what grade would you give Grant McCaslin and the Red Raiders this year? And then we can talk baseball as we go through. Uh, and then obviously most texts I think you've done. All right, fire away your comments. If you're on Twitter, it's easy to do. If you're on, I don't know, the YouTube channel, it's easy to do. If you're on Facebook, it's easy to do. Thanks to United Supermarkets. So hit it. Let's get going. Keep me up to date with anything I may be missing visiting with you guys. If you're watching uh, NCAA basketball action or even uh, Texas Tech, which I can kind of keep up. I can keep up pretty good most nights. Are we going yet? Come on. Why are we not going yet? We ought to be going yet. Refresh that. <sighs> Getting ready. Please wait. Refresh. Refresh. Come on now. Give me something. There we go. Still uh, no first pitch. All right. So Robert says grade is B minus on Texas Tech basketball. And that's fine. That's that's a that's a legitimate grade that you can give Tech basketball. Uh, it really begins where where is your baseline for what you thought Tech basketball would do? Remember, this is a team that was picked anywhere from seventh to tenth in the Big Twelve preseason. And for most of the year, they played without a lot of the guys that that was predicated upon at different times. That minus is, you know, I think that's fair. That's gentlemen. Uh, Chris, a, a, a minus, but really close to a. A uh, few, uh, few we did not show up in, but great job. I think a few games we didn't show up in is what he probably means. All right, so there's an A minus. That's legitimate another legitimate grade that you could give this team uh we we also you know then you begin to factor in how do you view just the baseline of ncaa tournament what is, what is that just no matter what kind of season a team is having you're in the ncaa tournament what is that bottom line grade uh, that you would have but as always i think it's important that you say you tailor it to the team you're you're looking at so you get on the united uh, supermarkets text line comment line and you let us know so we got a b minus we got an a minus that's i think that's a pretty good bracket right now i think anybody who would say i'll say this right now anybody who says this was a c plus or lower um you're wrong i would disagree with you on that from the get-go that i can't imagine any year uh, that you make the NCAA tournament and you finish fourth in the regular season in a league like the Big 12, and you say that's a C, um, I'm not going to buy that. So I think the bottom floor is probably where Robert is right now on a B minus, a B to a B minus, certainly with a first year head coach. Then you begin to justify it, you go from there. Uh, we ask every uh, Friday the most Texan thing you have done. You can fire away on that comment if you're just cruising in. On the show tonight, theraiderland.com. You can check out everything we do there on the website. We hope you do. We hope you start your day there. Raiderland Hot Links. They're tasty. They're warm. They're cool stuff we've seen. Stuff you might miss. That's why I posted up there. Hat tips, Joe Kinsey, screencaps.com. Screencaps at outkick.com, I should say. Uh, a great column every day. Awesome dude. Every now and then he throws us a bone. And uh, he includes stuff we do here at uh, Ryan Hyatt Media on Twitter. Uh, the Raider land on that thing. So we have that. We have baseball in progress right now. Where we talk tonight about uh, what baseball needs. And one thing they've done tonight is change the batting order in the lineup. And I really like what they've done. So we're top of the first right now. One out. Kyle Robinson pitching for the Red Raiders tonight. He needs to do what he did against Baylor. Give you a great seven inning start. Uh, save the bullpen for tomorrow. Give you a chance to win. And what does Texas Tech need baseball-wise right now? Big picture, they need wins. They need a lot of wins. Your RPI is 71. You'd moved up a little bit uh, after the midweek win, and then you lose last night to uh, BYU, obviously, 8-5. Uh, and, and now you start this, this weekend uh, about as low in the RPI as you've been in about nine years, probably the 2015 season. And I'm seeing some similarities that Tech's going to have to break out of if they're going to make the NCAA tournament this year. Let's not – let's start – stop talking about Big 12 championship and stuff like that. Let's just start about getting into the postseason with this team. 
And that, that's the conversation I think we can have. CJ says, we had a good year from a new group of guys and coach. They gelled well. I thought, yeah, I would agree with that. I thought they, uh, for a team that was pretty much thrown together, I thought you had some pretty good chemistry for the most part at times. Uh, bought a F, F50, F, F50, which 150, F50, F50. Give me how many? One, two, three, four wheel drive. Uh, Texan, right? Red and black, of course. Good call on that. Was it 150, 250? What do you buy there? Allen, uh, B plus could have been better. 23 11 is good record. 23 and 11. Let's stop right there. Uh, the NCAA tournament is the expectation, and they met that. Uh, 150, nothing wrong with the 150 on that. I assume, uh, you know, probably dual cab, anything. Um, B plus. Okay. So Allen goes B plus. Go back and look over the last like 30 years, how many times you've won 23 games in a year at Texas Tech. And you did that in the Big 12 this year that is better than it's ever been. Ever been. Everybody talking about Kansas being down. Kansas might not be that much down. Oh, they got bailed out on a huge, huge bad call last night. Clean block. They might not be that down. But then again, we have in this uh, world of sports, when certain teams aren't at the top, we try to denigrate everything else. But no, if we all agree that the Big 12 is what we say it is, and I believe it is, and you won 23 games in that league, go back and look over the last 25, 30 years, how many times you've done that. That alone is a B, a B right there. So the grade you would give Texas Tech, what would you give them this year and why? You, as we mentioned, you just won 23 games. You finished fourth in the league, and you had no business finishing that high given the injuries you dealt with in Big 12 play, particularly down the stretch, and the smoke and or the mirrors that Grant McCaslin employed to get some of those wins in the last month of play with Warren Washington down. And I think we said early, first time he got hurt, that all of a sudden it looked like he was the most valuable player on the team. And I would, I would, is it posit? I would submit, I would posit. Uh, that'd be like an A++, plus plus, I think, on an Eddie. There, uh, Alan saying A++ plus would be an Eddie. I would posit that given everything we saw, that Warren Washington was the most valuable player. Your player of the year, Pop Isaacs, but nothing else was going to matter, maybe, without Washington. That's okay. Now let's go back to Pop Isaacs and last night. Uh, and I think we said this early in the week that you were only going to go as far as he was going to shoot you. That if he didn't shoot well, if you didn't have that, and this goes for damn near every team in the NCAA tournament. If your top scorer, you know, the guy who scores the basketball, who puts the basketball in the basket and gets the points where it goes through and the uh, scoreboard, it does its thing and if you don't have that guy scoring, you don't win. And he didn't do it last night. And you didn't have enough to make up for it. And you weren't going to have enough. Even on a great night, um, that it, all things being equal, let's say Washington was healthy and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Burns Jr. last night and everything else was out there. Uh, and you got the same game you got out of Pop Isaacs. And I'm not laying the loss on him. I'm just saying – that's, again, how this tournament works. If you don't have everything firing, you probably don't win. That was just a given, like the mathematical equation. You give them that. Uh, so when you didn't have that, and particularly as this team was constructed late, that was the end of that. McMillan was only going to do what he could. Uh, D. Will, you know, you're only going to get so much out of those guys. I don't fault anybody. And I don't fault Isaacs for continuing to shoot. There were people last night saying, eh, no, you gotta, no, crap, shit, you got to shoot more. Find it. You wasn't going to find it. Didn't happen. So, yeah, A-plus, says Allen, would be a natty. Yeah, A-plus-plus, plus. I mean, whatever comes after that. That's like off the chart. Like you don't even get a grade, you get a trophy. They don't even grade you on that, you get a trophy. 
So how where would you go with this team right now on your grade for this season from where it started, new coach coming in, roster development, injuries, everything else? What would you give me tonight? Jump in on the communication chat lines, the transom, everything provided by United Supermarkets. There are schools in West Texas where United Supermarkets has their name on the arena in advertising. There are schools down in Austin where another place has it. Your choice. Uh, Tech baseball as well. We look at that tonight. We are scoreless right now. Bottom of the first. Uh, so Stripling singles to lead off. So they move Stripling into the top of the lineup. I'll run through this real quick. Then it's Bravo hitting 447, uh, coming back from the hand injury. Uh, you have McGee after that. Then Austin Green hitting fourth. Woodcox fifth. And now Cash, who's hit cleanup maybe third once and uh, at the leadoff spot, is hitting sixth in the, that power spot. Pompey Kitchen Door. Still nobody has told me the movie that line is from. Uh, Pompey Kitchen Door. Uh, seventh and then eighth in the lineup is Tracer Lopez. That batting average is getting up there, 258, but he gets on base. And then uh, Dylan Maxey down there uh, hitting 364 in the nine hole. Stupid, great. Um, you gotta, you got to figure out a way to stretch out the lineup, and that's what they're trying to do here to make it connect. And then Robinson tonight, just give me seven. Give me seven, give up three or fewer runs. Uh, Alan, I want to. Uh, I went to a Market Street today in Colleyville and drowned my Tex Sorrows in a Texas Texas toss salad with extra bacon. Uh, give me a, give me a, I don't, I'm unfamiliar with Texas toss salad. Give me a little something up there. CJ, I say a B for hustle and not ever giving up, always trying. Now, that's cool. I like that. That's, that's a fine, fine way to do it. If you're just tuning in, we're giving grades out tonight to Texas Tech men's basketball in the season. We've established the floor is a B minus, the ceiling, whatever you want to call it. We're looking at baseball as well. Got to get wins. Uh, RPI, not good. As bad as it's been in years. Let me go back real quick. Uh, let's see. Bravo's at second right now. What do we got going on? Bottom of the first, uh, Bravo, Fielder's Choice. Uh, stripling out at second. So uh, uh, so Bravo stole second. There we go. All right. So he's, at, he's, he's on second base, one out. Who's at bat? Oh, yeah, McGee. So you're trying to stretch this thing out. I like what we're doing here. Stripling's contact guy getting on. You want that bat out there. Uh, Bravo is hitting the hell out of everything. It doesn't matter. And pretty good speed as well, as we see. He steals a base there. McGee, you thought maybe he's the guy who would back up cash. We'll move him in a three-hole. Decent power as well. Um you know, not not huge, not crazy. We're like three home runs on the year. Yeah, 15 RBI. But he's been in a position where he hadn't had a lot of guys on base at times. Uh, and then Green, 309. So Woodcock's at 424 in the five and Cash down there in six. I like that, and I like the fact that they've got now Pompey that everybody's afraid of in the Big 12 because they know how good this kid is. And there is a deep order protection bat for Cash – and guys who are getting on base in front of him, and Green and Woodcox at 424. So he's got a chance to uh, hit with guys on base. And it's really kind of a de facto uh, three-hole uh, cleanup hitter spot that when you move a guy down from four uh, in the leadoff, so first inning, if everything goes, you guys understand what I'm saying. So second inning cleanup hitter basically is what you get out of that. Unless things are going really good. Hmm. Very interesting. This is why I like Tim Tadlock. Not afraid to tinker. So many coaches are afraid to make changes because they would have to admit they're wrong. They would have to admit that they put a guy in a place that he wasn't maybe uh, ready to hit at or it wasn't working. Tadlock is exactly the other way. Alan, lettuce, black bean, salsa ranch, avocado, Pico and bacon. That's not bad. Not bad on that. All right. So my uh, grade, and we'll get to that as we go through here in the little broadcast. And I hope you guys are sharing this, inviting people in. 
We love the comments, the questions. If you're just tuning in tonight, I understand. It's busy on a Friday. If you're watching on the replay, uh, you can hit us at theraiderland.com in the comments section. You can hit us on Twitter at Ryan Hyatt Media. If you agree, disagree, or otherwise, and just want to continue the conversation, we hope you do that. And we hope you order a great pizza from Domino's tonight. Thin crust, double pepperoni. That's my go-to. Although they've got the new, uh, that pan pizza type thing they got going on right now. I've not had one yet. It really looks good. It really does. And then if you're in the Hubaplex tonight or tomorrow, tomorrow morning, brunch time, out there before tank baseball, you could hit them up there, 130 Quaker. The Reserve, a culinary tavern. Like, come on, Nick, what are we doing here? Yeah, it works, though. It's good. So, uh, grading Texas Tech basketball, what would you give them for the full year? Grant McCaslin, first year. I mean, honestly, if I told you you don't know anything other than NCAA first round loss back in August, you're saying, no, that's not good enough. I would have said, uh, you're unrealistic. Randy, on Facebook, thanks to United Supermarkets, would you leave Nebraska if you were Trev Alberts and were Cornhusker royalty to take the AD job at A&M? Uh, yeah, I would, uh, for a lot of different reasons. One, money. Uh, two, you got a better chance at success in multiple sports at Texas A&M because of the revenue that's coming in. But wait a minute. Nebraska's got Big Ten money. Yeah, they got Big Ten money, but they don't have they don't have facilities. They don't have whether they don't have all the things that you would have down there at AM. And they're going to hold you and hate you at a higher standard, just like Scott Frost. So you're not going to be right in the Big Ten at Nebraska in football, and that's all they really care about. They've lost their natural recruiting base. They had no recruiting base. Interior within Nebraska, you get about five players a year that can play. Uh, so, yeah, would I leave and go to AM and cash checks for like three to five years? And we're about the same age? Hell yeah, I'd do it. 100%. You got a better chance to be successful in more sports at AM than you do in Nebraska. And it's hard for the Nebraska people to understand. And maybe it's hard for a lot of, you know, average college fans to understand the change that took place in Nebraska when they left the Big 12. When they left the Big 12, they took a huge gamble that the money would overcome the inherent obstacles that were going to be in front of them. They also didn't truly understand where they were in the pecking order of most of the major sports. They'd had a decent little run there with Alex Gordon uh, and uh, Nebraska baseball. And I know we're talking baseball in a very small – but basketball, no. No, I didn't know anything. Uh, so, yeah. Long answer to a short question by Randy there. But if I'm Trev Alberts, yeah, the A&M AD job is better than the Nebraska AD job by any stretch of any imagination you want to have. I'll give them a B plus. Uh, and if they'd won – if Texas Tech had won the game last night and won one game in the NCAA tournament, I, I would have given it a smooth A, uh, not even an A minus, a smooth A. Uh, to get that, I think you got to get a win, even coming off a disastrous season like last year. And we kept saying, me and Rob Bro on the radio show last year, for those who were listening to that, and then as we transitioned into online only, uh, that – the program was not in trouble. It was a bad season. It was a bad year. It wasn't a bad program. The underpinnings of the program were good at Texas Tech. Everything that you needed to be successful, and Grant McCaslin saw that, and he came and he took advantage of that. Uh, so had they won last night, that's an easy A. And still, it's one of the better – Seasons you've had again over the last 25 years. Go back and find me, you know, more than a handful of seasons that are better than 23 wins and fourth in the Big 12. And if you really believe that the Big 12 is that good, then you've got to say that counts for something. So I give it a, a B plus for sure. And I may be underestimating 
and not really valuing the coaching job that we watched them do with the injuries over the last month of the season in this league. I, I don't know how they won some of the games they won because I kept saying without Washington, you can't do this. And then Williams uh, gets dinged up in the tournament. And obviously that, I think that played a role. I don't know that you beat Houston with a healthy, but, uh, you know, maybe last night's a little different. I don't know. So I could be undervaluing what they did. But I sit there and watch what happened. And I go, I'll give that a B plus. And I'm vastly interested in seeing what happens over the next three months of roster building. McMillan says he'll come back senior year. Pop Isaac says he'll come back. Not surprised either one. Their best options are probably being right where they are, and that's good. That's good for Texas Tech. Uh, CJ, proud uh, for Oakland coach to be Kentucky. Uh, Golke was on fire. Yeah, you're watching that last night. You're going, dude. He hit like 10 shots, and he had three dribbles on all possessions that he got the ball and shot. Amazing. And, I mean, I've got a better hairline than he does. I'm 54 years old. So that was kind of cool. Also, at the same time, I'm watching that going, man, this is probably the worst thing for, like, Tech or somebody to see. Ah, yeah, it's wide open to the Sweet 16 now. Kentucky's out of the way. We got this. This is going to be easy. All right, where are we on baseball right now? Looks like Texas Tech has played it a run uh, and up one nothing as it was a McGee double that scored Bravo. So you got that run home there in the bottom of the first. So that's good. And again, you get that with Bravo stealing up there, hitting second. Bravo getting second base and manufacturing the run. So we talk about this lineup stretching out better. And already, I think, as we look in the top of the second, and you've got a strikeout by Kyle Robinson on golf, already we see that lineup stretch out a little bit better in the first inning with a guy getting on, moving over, stealing, and then getting in. So, again, I, I like I like this lineup. And by that, I mean I like the way it's constructed tonight. We'll see. Uh you need you need wins. You you gotta win this series. I hate to say that. You gotta you got to win this series to do what, Hyatt? Uh, you got to win this series. Not We're not talking about Big 12 anymore. We're talking about clawing back up to an RPI in the 40s and 30s and getting a chance to uh, go be a three seed somewhere. That that right now, to me, is the uh, immediate goal for this team. Win some games and make sure you're in the NCAA tournament. Don't let it be 15. Uh, Randy Grant didn't inherit many players from Adams or Beard. Tubby left the cupboard, cupboard to full for Beard. Yes, he did. That's why we have utmost respect for so many reasons for uh, Tubby Smith, even though some Tech fans have a hard time understanding that. And I get it. I understand. But uh, you should. You should absolutely thank him for this 10-year run, 10-year uh, stretch, because he's the one that got it back for you. Looking there, top of the second, game status, Kyle Robinson. Now, what, where are we at, pitch count? Dang it, Kyle. All right, so you got two strikeouts. So you go 3-2, uh, but it's uh, – you're throwing too many pitches, Kyle. 26 pitches through an inning and two-thirds. Throw a couple of ground ball out. Strikeouts are fascist. Involved everybody. Because you need to stay around to the for sure the six and maybe the seventh. Take a little pressure off the bullpen tonight. All right, Kyle, can we do this? I'm not anti-strikeout. Just you got to be more efficient. One, two, yeah. That's two strikeouts this inning. Long pitch count on that. It happens. But Hyatt, you, know, you want the guy to strike guys out? Yeah, that's good. I understand. All right, you guys can do a couple of things for us tonight. Uh, we love everybody who watches this live or otherwise. Uh, if you can, share this with your friends. Put it on your social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, or otherwise. You can do this in multiple ways. Uh, we also ask that anytime you see any of our 
sponsors online. Tell them thanks for being a part of Raiderland. It's not hard to do. From Domino's Pizza to the Reserve, a culinary tavern, maybe United Supermarkets. I mean, we link to these people all the time on our page. And all you got to do is say, hey, thanks for being out there, Boot City. We appreciate that. The Arctic Air Studios are perfect tonight. Perfectly Arctic Air. If your air is not perfectly Arctic in the coming days, you need to call the bear. Uh, Chris, sorry I'm late. I'd give Tech a B plus. I feel like they definitely overachieved. Well, Chris, you're just like me. I gave them a B plus. So we're some patico on that, and that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing to do. Feel like I don't want to give up on this inning. Yeah, two out double there to Robinson. So one on and two down there for uh, BYU in the uh, second top of the second. Yeah, you're late, but you're right there on time with where I think the grade ought to be. I think the grade ought to be a B plus. And if I told you again back in August that this team would earn a B plus, you know, you'd be sitting there going, oh, what would that mean? Like six in the Big 12, seven? Are they achieve, overachieved? They're better than what they were slated? You had been scratching your head kind of going, what, what does that mean? Make the NCAA tournament maybe? Postseason? Yeah, I think we'll take it. So uh, share this with your friends, invite them in. Uh, we'll have this uh, posted on the website here in a little bit, theraiderland.com. If you didn't weigh in earlier today on the most Texan thing you have done, please go do that on the website, theraiderland.com. Please, 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 please. Uh, also, uh, if you're not following us on Facebook, join the Facebook page. Same thing on Twitter, at Ryan Hyatt Media. And obviously on our uh on our YouTube uh, channel, please subscribe to that. Even if you don't watch it on YouTube, uh, when you guys subscribe to it, it bumps us up on the metrics, and that's good for everybody. Uh, not sure what the schedule will be tomorrow. Tech Baseball wraps up the series, so we probably have Diamond Talk uh, summing up the series tomorrow afternoon, evening, uh, going into Sunday, and then, uh, I don't know, we'll see what happens for there. All right, you guys are the best. We appreciate you hanging out. Thanks to all of our great sponsors. I have to hit the end stream. Then it says in stream, not yet, or in stream. Well, yeah. And as Fred Garvin, male prostitute, played by Dan Aykroyd on Saturday Night Live, once said, give me a moment while I struck a seductive pose.